Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Mia. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And uh, Hello, Jonas, who will probably join us in a couple of seconds or minutes later. So very welcome to everybody for joining us today again for another talk uh, around our exhibition, Open for Business, Magnum Photographers and Commission. Oh, hey, there you are, Jonas. Welcome. <laughs> Just on time, perfect. Good timing. I finished the other presentation one minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> so many thoughts, just going from one into the other. Yeah. So, yes, so we're very happy to have you here, all everybody in different cities and countries. And um, yeah, so as the exhibition, which uh, we'll introduce. A little later, uh, was opened in October uh, and then closed and will not open anymore before it's taken down. Unfortunately, couldn't take place in Arles, but will go to foam next year. Uh, we developed some projects and ideas how we could give access to people to the exhibition um, without being able to visit it physically. So we created a number of videos introducing the different chapters. We did a talk with Christina de Medel and Martin Pa in December. And we're very happy to have all four of you here, all three of you, <laughs> um, to speak about uh, the subject of group projects um, today. So um, Jonas and Thomas, thank you very much for joining and doing a, a small presentation of group projects later. Miriam and I had, Miriam is curator at FOAM, Thomas and Jonas, of course, both long-term photographers at Magnum. Uh, Miriam and I curated this show together. We had the chance to dig into the physical and also digital archive of Magnum uh, and create this exhibition, which is shining a light on a less, lesser known part uh, showing that Magnum photographers have from the beginning, um, since the agency was founded, uh, not only done personal projects and editorial assignments, but also commercial work. So working for brands, for NGOs, for industries and businesses. Um, and this they have not have they have not only done uh, to make money, which was of course an important aspect to finance the agency, which was a business from the beginning, but also because um, they were interested in the challenges of doing commercial works. Uh, they got access to places um, they could otherwise not work, and also what we found out is that the commissions uh, sometimes were even a starting point for a, a long-term project or a personal project. So all these aspects uh, uh, can be found uh, in the show. Maybe we can have some um, installation shots on the show. And um, all these um, aspects are visible, We're shining a critical light on all these aspects of commercial projects. Um, for the audience, um, just to let you know, you will be able to ask questions at any time uh, if you just put them in, in the chat and we'll uh, certainly get back to them later. So here you can see some inst installation shots of the big exhibition, which is still uh, shown in the cube in Eschborn near Frankfurt. You can just flip through them. And the aspects, the last time the talk was Martin and Christina, we were focusing on working for fashion brands. Today, we are focusing on group projects and um, Miriam will now give an introduction, introduction to this subject. All right, well, thank you, Anna-Marie. Um, Yes, one of the chapters in the exhibition uh, focuses on group commissions. 
And um, the very idea for group assignments um, actually already came into existence in the early years of Magnum, when the agency still mainly specialized in magazine reportage. So apart from individually pursued reportage, uh, a model of group projects was developed, uniting the photographer's various perspectives on the same topic. And some of these assignments became very influential. And one that particularly stands out is Children's World that was uh, created in 1954. Um, it is part of the exhibition. And um, we have the original material uh, displayed in a vitrine. And Children's World examined the lives of children from all over the world, like Agenda to, to France, Cuba to Lapland. And each photographer who participated uh, would focus on a child for two weeks and fill in a whole questionnaire about their daily life. And you could think of Henri Cartier-Besson, uh, who portrayed a young ballerina at the um, Paris Opera School. And uh, for example, Inga Morris' documentation of a six-year-old English boy attending a prestigious prep school or Cornel Capa, um, who photographed a young boy from Peru. Um, Elliot Erwitt, who photographed a young cowboy in, uh, uh, from the Colorado, um, Colorado Ranchland. So it was extremely diverse. And um, those, uh, the results were published in three issues of um, Holiday magazine in between 1955 and 1956. And that project also led to Magnum's first collective photo book. Um, so even though it wasn't a commercial assignment necessarily, but an editorial one, it did become a very effective uh, working model that is still one of the most common commercial assignments for Magnum photographers up to this day. And um, from the 1950s onwards, uh, Magnum's commercial activities became more diverse. So apart from the humanitarian subjects that Magnum is mostly known for, um, Magnum photographers also started to cover other kinds of stories as well. And another example um, is then, for example, the film industry through personal connections of Robert Capa. And that actually led in 1960 to nine Magnum photographers being invited on the set of The Misfits. Um, the legendary film um, to create a glimpse for the audience of what was going on behind the scenes and to uh, for the film to use that as publicity material. And actually that was uh, really created a historical um, document of the breakdown of Marilyn Monroe's marriage to the film uh, film's playwright, Arthur Miller. And it also recorded for posterity Monroe and Clark Gable's last time on set before their untimely deaths. Um, so the idea of the collective report has from the very beginning of Magnum uh, been widely different in content. But um, if you summarize all this group assignments are still among the most popular kinds of commissions for um, uh, the photographers. Why, you could think, well, it often allows them to travel to places that they otherwise might not have visited. And also because most of these assignments have an open brief as Anna Marie and I learned. So, um, but just to make a bit of an, uh, if, if you imagine a group assignment, it's not really like a jolly group trip that, that all the Magnum photographers get on a bus and, and go to this place wherever they are invited to. Uh, they work individually and regardless of each other. And only when they return to the office with their results, they actually see each other's work and the comparison starts. So um, this actually makes us very curious to hear from Thomas and Jonas how they have experienced group assignments. Um, and yeah, it also raises questions of how Magnum make sure that all the photographers on a certain group assignment uh, bring something different. Um, and, you know, how, how the photographers prepare uh, for uh, a carte blanche assignment on a place or scene they might not be familiar with. So maybe this last question could actually be the starting point. Don't know if who would like to respond first, Jonas or Thomas. 
how do you prepare for a carte blanche assignment when you're invited to maybe cover a place or region that you've never been to? It, 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 all, it all depends, um, I guess, uh, on, on the nature of the of, of the work. You know, just as this varies, uh, whether it's a personal project or editorial project, you know, the level of preparation can be super heavy with research and, and you know, itineraries and schedules, or it can be very light. Uh, and it, it really depends on... on, on if, if the sort of a chance encounter and improvisation is part of the, it, it's part of the gambit, it's part of the, you know, like I, 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 I've done a um, uh, commercial assignment with, uh, with for example, Land Rover cars, where it was all about going on a road trip and sort of documenting. And then, and the whole point there was the serendipity and, and to, to, to leave things to chance. So the, the whole point was not to prepare. Yeah, you know, I mean, like I had some idea where I was going to go and then sort of just zoom off. You know, that for sure doesn't work in a lot of other commercial contexts where you have, you know, art directors sitting there and, <laughs> and uh, you know, very clear expectations. Very often com commercial work has very clear deliverables and expectations. So but Don, to... when, we, when we would zoom in specifically on the carte blanche assignments that are mostly attached to Oh, yeah. assignments when you're invited, for example, to cover a country or region. Maybe I wasn't specific oh, yeah. enough on this. But yeah. then, so when you go to a place that you might never have been before, maybe an, an example will come up later on in during one of your presentations, then then how, how can people imagine, like, what is your work process? I mean, it, it, it's more or less the same. You know, it, it depends how much do I need that serendipity, uh, you know, and 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 how well do I need to know the place to function. I mean, like normally, I mean, like I need someone to help me translate if I don't know the language. I, I need to find a partner who can be a translator assistant, you know, who can help me socialize. Okay, so I need that. Uh, you know, normally I will think not in terms of like which specific images I want to come back with, but I'm always trying to think what kind of situations do I need to get into? You know, that's how I think. Like, so I make myself a list of like a wish list of kind of situations. And then I kind of like figure out, well, is it, can I reasonably hope to get into those kind of things without preparation or do I need to prepare? I mean, I don't know, Thomas uh, maybe has a different approach, but. Well, I think it goes all over the. I mean, goes all over the field. I mean, I think I have. Uh, I generally, I don't, I don't. For me, it's very difficult to make a distinction between the commercial assignment or something where I go elsewhere. Obviously, if there's a commercial assignment, there's a time limit, which for me takes away. Which what I guess I would say is the biggest luxury in having is having time. So, I mean, I've. I, there was a time in my life I thought if I don't live somewhere for a year and learn the language, I can't take pictures. So I, I've slowly. I've gotten over this and I've done other things, but um, it's uh, so I think there's probably the ways to, to find that balance between what well, to know in well, either to be functional so that you're not totally stupid and you don't totally tumble around lost, but also not, not to be too prejudiced. But I don't, I'm, I'm in my life, I realize I'm researching much more now, and it's just, it's, and I'm not always totally happy about it. I think in, a, in, a, in an ideal world. I would have time to learn to, to figure out the place and then come up with something. So, but, um, but when you do a regional project, for example, and you do it as a group project, is it different? I mean, if you do it on your own, you probably have the feeling that you have to cover everything. But if you do it as a group project, are you maybe more relaxed and say I can focus on one aspect because there are nine more photographers focusing on other aspects? Is it is it is it a uh, is it a different a different challenge, or are you uh, once are I, you maybe fearing that uh, another photographer will have will choose the same aspect subject? I mean, usually there is, but I think what is important there's some sort of a curator or somebody who runs this who has a bigger idea how this all holds together. I mean, this is not, I mean, it is not a trip of ten people on a bus. So um, <laughs> maybe unfortunately, but like, so um, I think we. Uh, that there, there are always more specific 
smaller stories or sub aspects of something. And well, I don't know if the competition. I don't. I mean, I haven't come across anything. Sort of. It, it's also. It, it's it, in a in a in a good way. It plays out between the photographer's sensibilities, what a photographer might be good at, or what he what he knows or she knows, and then. Yeah. So, so and are you sometimes sharing your work before it's uh, well, while you're working, or is it really that you're just sharing it afterwards when everybody's come back? No, it's a mixture. It's a mixture. Um, I mean, I think you're actually. Uh, I mean, you're 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 putting your finger on one thing because I I, I do think in my own experience of these projects, kind of if I'm going into a group project, then I I think maybe more specifically sort of like well what is what is the thing i can carve out of this like what is my little thing and and in, in a way that that provides some freedom right because like the more constraints you have the more free you become somehow like and i i, I can easier say you know i'm doing this really specific weird little thing uh because that will be my little contribution into the bigger picture and 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 there's sort of like freedom of creativity in that and 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 quite often i found that the group projects that i've been part of you know it, it has been an occasion that you know that that you can experiment with something or you can try out some strange idea because you know that like there there is a bigger picture so so uh yeah. I, i think that's why I, i i like doing them as well i enjoy that because like pe people come up with their little weird little thing and 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 The, the 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 single components sort of form a, a big comprehensive thing mm. anyways mm -hmm. and uh, Miriam gave a, a introduction on the let's say the history the tradition of group project is it still that they play a big role is it are they still very popular uh, is it still that is, is it true that many magnum photographers enjoy doing them or is it like with many other aspects some like it and some don't I mean, I think it's uh, it's one of the, the the golden moments of Magnum. I mean, for us as a group, I mean, this is we spend a lot of time talking about all kinds of administrative things, whatever. There's the whole the whole cooperative issues, but I think creatively, I think it's definitely the. I mean, even I think more than before, and and in a different way, in a more. I mean, we've done group projects sort of on our own. I mean, without without much outside. Initiative, so, I mean, but it covers this. It's big. I think what Jonas was saying, it sort of takes away this. I mean, it takes away the obligation to have the have, make the one statement on a on a place, because there is ten of us or seven or five, whatever. And it's becoming. It's, Magnum has become very diverse as a, in in its in its approaches. I think so. It's it's becoming. Quirkier, it's becoming weirder, wilder. I don't know. And who's selecting the Magnum photographers? I mean, are you are you saying I'm interested, or is somebody at Magnum saying let's do do a good mix, or <laughs> is it the commissioner saying I want these people in the project? You have to bribe the one who finds it. <laughs> you want to know. <laughs> no, it, it, it can it can be uh, all, all kinds of variations on it. Uh, You know, some sometimes sometimes it, it's kind of pre-picked because uh, the commissioner wants this or that, or but sometimes it's like a theme, right? That that somebody, some backer wants to explore a theme, you know, and 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 then then people actually put in proposals. You know, people compete a little bit, you know, that uh, and it's about really who who is actually really really interested in that exploring that topic. Uh, You know, I, in my experience, like these projects sometimes are super successful and are sometimes some some of the most most interesting work that comes out of Magnum as a group. You know, because, you know, because people feel free and really invest and and make them into their personal work. You know, uh, then it really works. Sometimes they are more flat because people kind of like approach it more as an assignment, and it kind of. Uh, It feels uninvested somehow, you know. So, so it's like, and we always talk about like, what are the ingredients that make people trigger as a group, and and it becomes sort of personal and becomes fascinating, and people really spend extra time on it. Uh, 
and it's not so, such an easy code to crack either. Sometimes group projects about really interesting things can fall flat anyways. But you know, it's all about like the right amount of water and the right fertilizer there and the right inspiration and right setting, then it works. And 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 it's kind of like a magical little formula that isn't quite clear to us even what makes it work and not. I um I also I have this question in mind that also relates to uh Thomas what you just said about um that in the beginning you wish you you or maybe you still wish you had a year to do your research and then how John has tapped into that that you know because the group assignment actually gives you allows you that freedom to also focus on a detail because you know that it's going to be a puzzle of everything uh, everybody bringing in another subject on a, on a bigger thing. I still wonder, uh, because a lot of group assignments are focusing on countries and regions, um, how you would reflect on uh, this certain critical regard uh, that has emerged within photojournalism on the idea of the photographer as an objective outside observer and um, yeah, people are more and more actively calling for hiring local photographers who are actually well informed on local subjects at play and um, and to let communities speak for themselves. And how do you deal with this criticism, especially when you are actually invited to come to a place that you might not know? So is this a struggle for you or do you have a completely different perspective on this? No, I mean, Look, I think, I hope we still have something to say. I mean, I think, I really think that's a, that's something to, to hope for. And uh, I think that it's, it, it's definitely become something, it becomes more of a discussion or a, a, a present moment, but it's also, it's, I think it's always been one of the success levels that always had to be how much were we possible to connect with local people or how much, how much was there of a collaboration or in, I mean, I would say now, I'm much more looking into how can, who can who could I work together? I mean, would that be a way to way to do something? I think go away from this whatever and ten photographers parachuting somewhere and having um uh, and and having their say only. In the, in the, yeah. yeah, I I think you know this is for sure a topic we we talk about a lot and and you know we 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 talk about it as much inside Magnum as it's being talked about about outside of Magnum and, you know, n not, not just in terms of group projects, but in terms of all, mm. our entire practice, you know, this is, these are important questions that, that, that sort of we are all having to examine, you know, a little bit more than probably traditionally has been done. Uh, I, I, I think a lot comes, you know, it, it, it connects with sort of what, what is the attitude of, 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 of the, the 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 work being done as well. I mean, in the sense, that, you know, I think maybe to put it like that, I think maybe the time is is about to sort of pass a little bit on sort of like this. You know, to put it like that, I, I can't see you know going forward into the future that you know we will be doing a lot of group projects that's really about sort of like ten magnum photographers parachuting in to to tell the the the, the the complete and 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 uh, final story about 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 some place and, and sort of like here is the his here is the the conclusive uh, story about that you know I, I think it, the, the attitude is more than more sort of like okay here here we have a chance to 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 explore and and be curious about something ask questions uh, on a very subjective level you know and I think that's more direction that a lot of us are anyways. You know, the, the idea of us as objective observers coming in, I mean, and I don't know anyone in Magnum who believes that uh, quite anymore. Uh, uh, but, but, but sort of like, it, it's an exploration, it's a collaboration, it, 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 it's a bouncing off of ideas and, 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 and work is produced as a result of it. I mean, I think it's more that personal approach that, that I think interests us more anyways as a group. I can't speak for everyone, but for, for me at least, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in going in there and like giving the whole and complete truth about the place. I'm interested in exploring some question I have about something. 
maybe we should now look at the work. Yeah. I think. So maybe Jonas, would you start uh, yeah. with giving uh, an introduction in project that we've selected together, which are also part of the show? And the floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so access to life was a project that that we did, uh, which is in a way being one of the very successful group projects, uh, commissioned by the Global Fund against uh, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Of course, it's a worldwide conglomerate, uh, sort of nonprofit um, a partnership agency. Uh, as part of their information and and sort of fundraising work uh, the, to to. Uh, raise funds from, from governments and, and private entities uh, for the fight uh, for and giving antiretroviral treatment to people uh, in places where healthcare is uh, uh, in a bad state somehow. So we all sort of got the commission to go to, each photographer went to one place uh, and went there, uh, met, people who were diagnosed with uh, with uh, AIDS and and uh, followed them in a way as they went through the course of antiretroviral uh, medicine. So I went to Haiti. Uh, that's the images we see here. This is from the beginning of my trip. So I, I, I basically followed four uh, patients. And this is, a, of course, a very sensitive uh, situation to be landing in. Uh, this is people in... in, in you know, a real health and life and death uh, crisis. Uh, but the, they were all for people who were given the opportunity um, for uh, getting the antiretroviral medicines. Uh, so uh, um, there were these four people. So um, I went in there and I was curious about really, you know, how does this even work? and and and. You know, people were in a terrible shape, like like this woman we see here, Alpha, uh, skinny like a skeleton, etc. Uh, so I spent a few weeks uh, with them in the beginning. Uh, I left a bunch of Polaroid cameras with with them and their families. I, I wanted to create some sort of collaboration, uh, and this only, of course, would work if it was something that they would be interested in. This is not a project I could kind of like. You know, force anyone to do so. It, it was really about through the health workers and 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 the community workers finding people who could be, uh, who were positive to being documented and and positive to collaborating with me uh, uh, to document the situation. So they would actually. I took these pictures of people in a very sort of uh, fragile state, uh, and I left the Polaroid cameras to them. Just stop, stop here a second um, uh, with them. Um, uh, for for I think it was uh, uh, three months, and then I returned, um, and and the family members had been photographing in the middle, of the, and that became sort of part of my project. Uh, so, in this case, this is how when, before I went, I had a, of course formed this plan that I wanted to see if it was possible to make this sort of photographic collaboration. Uh, I had gotten the Polaroid cameras, I gotten all that film, I came with that, so I had that basic idea. You know whether it would work or not. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what the results were, and of course, we didn't know how how these people would fare. Um, and um, you know, um, if you go to the next slide, in some cases, the, the 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 results were absolutely spectacular. Like this woman, you know, looking like a skeleton just three months before, looking at you know by any means. To a lay person, uh, like she was at that store, now healthy, vibrant, skin color, you know, energy, and and she had, and the family had documented this whole pro transformation through through these three months by taking one picture, one portrait of her per day. So it became almost like a time lapse. Um, so so that was a very direct way for me to sort of try to explore the time. Uh, aspect of this, which is sort of like what you don't get if you just sort of land in a place and, and then, you know, come back uh, three months later. I wanted to to make it a continuum. So in, in that sense, in, in, in those cases, it was a very inspiring thing. And, and, and uh, you know,
and it became part of the exhibition as well with sort of like this this polaroid between the different timelines i mean this is a woman who was you know really uh skin and bones uh just three months before and now you know enjoying time with her family uh, access to life i mean it's in the title right so the other photographers in this project had totally different approaches uh, you know and, and and that is sort of like what the project made it strong is that people had this different ways to interpret and and try to explore this question um and uh this this particular this is from a museum exhibition at the corcoran museum in washington this was a, exhi a exhi group exhibition that traveled the whole world so but in my case here uh i'm just showing my my part of it you see sort of on the left hand side you see different of these um uh, people i met from my first visit and then you have the line of polaroids the sort of transformation into what happens uh on the right hand side and 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 uh and uh two of them made it and two of them didn't so two of them ended uh tragically uh and and um and and two became you know completely transformed uh so this is of course a very difficult subject to tackle and and and, and to be photographing and and to meet these people in this very difficult situation so my in a way, approach here was to try to find a way to make it into a collaboration with someone who who wanted that engagement. You know, the, so so when I was there the first time, it was about finding, you know, talking to to several people and health workers and and finding someone who who who, who for some, one reason or another wanted to be part of that sort of uh, documentation and, and collaboration. Uh, Uh, so, so this was in uh, just to say this was in the end a very successful project for the global fund. They raised, you know, many, many millions of of, of dollars using this project in outreach and exhibitions. In it was magazines, uh, books. It was uh, special edition publications handed to you know world leaders and presidents and prime ministers. So it was really the the, the photography wasn't really just uh meant to sort of appear as a feature in the sunday times magazine it was really sort of like a tool for 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 uh, for change for fundraising for uh, uh, activism you could say for uh, for lobbying uh of uh fundraising uh so yeah uh offside brazil this was a sort of different type of project it was sort of like uh, created um during the world cup in 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 brazil and a bunch of us uh, got to go and 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 this was a very carte blanche uh, assignment you know it was really like you're going to brazil in the world cup collectively we're trying to paint a picture of both sort of football but also a, 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 an image of brazil an encounter with brazil at this given time some people went very specifically in terms of the, the the events of the sporting events others were really taking it at just as next a way to to look at uh society in brazil uh this image uh that you can see is sort of morphing slowly i went there and i thought okay this is a chance for me to experiment um uh, and I, I made these things i call uh, still films not film stills but uh, still films i was this was sort of before we had the iphones to to do this kind of slow motion uh, things but i was fascinated by sort of the merging of of, of of film and stills um i was using these specialty very high speed uh film cameras that uh, could do sort of a thousand frames per second uh, slow motion so i wanted to create not movies but photographs but living photographs i would kind of experiment to see if, could i frame it like a photograph can i see it as a still image but that it has a time dimension so i tried that uh both around the favelas where people are playing soccer but also a lot of portraits of people and and um uh, you can go to the next one maybe um it, these portraits are 
you know, people standing around uh, outside of neighborhood cafes and, and bars watching Brazil play uh, football. Of course, football is, is so so big in Brazil. So it was sort of like a, a, a delight to kind of like play with emotions and see that. So I, as they were watching the screen and the bar uh, behind me, I would always be standing with this uh, super high speed film camera filming faces, reactions. Uh, and in a way, it was like, an ex it took me back to the beginnings of, of, of my account with photography. You know, I, by this time, I'd already been a photographer for 15 years or something. But here it was that feeling of like where photography actually revealed something you didn't see with your own eyes. Uh, there were details that happened that would in real life happen so quickly. But if you took that one second and stretched it to two and a half minutes, that one second, there would be stuff in their expressions that, that, that I would have missed if I just saw it in a, you know, so it was like this way of, of challenging the medium for me a little bit, trying to see photography afresh. Uh, and, and create these portraits and scenes um, you know, sadness and joy. Uh, of course, uh, Brazil got thrown headfirst out of the World Cup at a certain moment, uh, which was, uh, you know, probably like a national tragedy there. Um, and, and so I have a lot of sad faces because it was going a certain direction after a while. Uh, um, but uh, but uh, yeah, it was a way for me to experiment and. and uh, you know, and, and again, this was a carte blanche group assignment that gave me the freedom to pick a very, very small and narrow and specific way of working uh, that for me would be interesting and without the feeling that I had to produce like the overarching statement about Brazil at this moment and all the issues of Brazil and politics and, and economy and sport and everything. I could just pick one little thing because I knew that the other people were doing other stuff. Um, so I, I very much enjoy these, um, these, uh, these group projects for that reason, because it gives that freedom. Um, now, of course, we see much more of this slow motion thing because we can do it on our telephones and stuff, but this was a little bit pre that uh a little bit before that era so like um uh for me it felt very much like a, a fresh way to use photography for myself it sort of helped me recharge my batteries creatively for for doing other work that i've done since and photography is so much about freezing a moment we always talk about that the decisive moment and freezing a moment but it's kind of like taking that decisive moment and stretching it out in time and 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 seeing what what's actually in there for real so all of these see still films that we see they're, they're basically like half a second in real life or or a second or something i like this guy he's uh obviously smoking a cigarette and he's exhaling and in, in real life you wouldn't actually notice that he's actually rebreathing the smoke you know it, it, it goes out here and comes back in there very effective way to uh, um, to uh, uh, to get uh, all the smoke out of the cigarettes okay we can uh, keep going so a home um, was a group project in 2018 commissioned by Fuji, or, or we're partnered with Fuji, where a lot of us, you see a big list of photographers, they were launching a new camera um, and, and, and wanted to be involved in the project. And, and we saw this as a moment to explore the concept of home. You know, there's so many of uh, Magnum photographers who are always traveling around the world and, you know, uh, photographing all kinds of other people, but this was a chance to sort of make a visual diary of, of or an interpretation of, of home. And home means something very different to a lot of us. You know, some people have big families, some people hardly have a, a, a firm place of, of living and, and move around a lot. So it was a very different, uh, people had very different um, uh, results 
each of the individual parts uh, were very different, which was interesting. And it was an interesting way to sort of like um, look look a little bit inwards instead of outwards. So in, in my case, uh, this naturally happened just the summer that my second daughter was uh, being born, Billy. So that was, of course, what, what I, I was going to be home anyways, just photographing home because I do that as well uh, normally. But this was a chance that I sort of like just focused even more on this particular time in my family. Uh, that's my wife and my elder daughter. Um, after Billy was born. Um, so, so um, again, it, it, it becomes a very personal thing, very subjective, very, this is very much my, my interpretation of, well, it, it's, it's my life, it's my home, so it becomes very personal. And you know, I don't know how how interesting my life is to everyone else, but for me, it was very much interesting to also see my colleagues way what what they photographed when they got the keyword home, oh, because you know we all know each other. And some of us are, are close friends. Uh, uh, we're all colleagues, but you know, there are many of my colleagues I don't know, you know, what their home life looks like and and, and how they think about that concept, which for me is a very big in my life, but it's not like that for everyone. So it was interesting to see on a personal level, it was really interesting to see what the other people were making uh, out of this project. Um, and this also became an exhibition and, 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 and book um, that, that, that went all over the world. Um, so, so I, I guess to sum up for me, you know, the, 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 the group projects that that been most fascinating for me are, are the ones where you know the the, the 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 combination of group project and carte blanche makes it possible to do something very 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 specific that's it thank you Thank you very much, Jonas. Uh, I mean, of course, I think me and I have a couple of questions, but I think because time is running, I would like to give the floor to Thomas first because, you know, to give an insight in some more group projects. So, Thomas, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So, I'm going to be showing Georgian Spring. I mean, it's just something that came to my mind, which I didn't, uh, hadn't thought about actually. That uh, when we did the home project, I did. Part of my home contribution was Georgia. So I have a very long and old uh, relationship with Georgia since the 1990s, where I spent most of the 90s there. And um, I came back uh, and forth all the time and was in Georgia for the 2008 war. And uh, so the Georgia Spring project was born after the, uh, out of the, well, it was in a way, was my, uh, I had a relatively close relationship with the then Georgian president, Tokashvili, who, um, was this young reformist, um, uh, I think at the time he was the youngest president and the, the youngest head of state in the world. And um, so he wanted to have a sort of a big project on Georgia and it was like a cultural commission. And um, so what was very important from the beginning, I think from, from also from a Magnum side, this could only work if it was well, I don't know, carte blanche, or basically that there was no interference, that there was a free, there was a way to, so that we could, um, the photographers could act freely and photograph. So the only restriction from the, or the only indication from the Georgian side was that um, it should focus on modern contemporary Georgia, sort of the European aspect of it, not the old traditional Georgia, which has been for many years. And me too, I've, I've photographed it a lot, was sort of this, um, to like the more traditional side so it was about modern georgia and uh so we decided to have a curator which was chris boot as of aperture until recently and um i think it was key to have a curator who was outside magnum was sort of between magnum and the and the um 
the Georgians. And um, so he chose and uh, conceived trips for about the 10 photographers that were uh, a part of it. And uh, they all would uh, visit Georgia accompanied by what wasn't meant to be, not, not just a fixer, but like have a, have a real, like instead have, have like a, a filmmaker, an artist who would show them around, sort of be their guide to the country. And uh, so Chris uh, created this this idea how there could be different, all these different trips they would take, sometimes in a smaller scale and then all across the country that would sort of cover most aspects. So I will um, run you through the, basically I'm sort of running you through a short version of the book that came out then. Um, uh, so what was also Magnum had Magnum photographers had been visiting Georgia since uh, the Second World War, as Cartier Bresson and um, uh, Kappa, and uh, famously Kappa came in the 1950s with Steinbeck, and uh, he coined that phrase that when the when the Soviets go to heaven, they watch well, Steinbeck and Kappa. Um, uh, when the Soviets go to heaven, they go to they don't go to paradise, they go to Georgia, which was is in Georgia. It's sort of their favorite. Um, sentence and um, the uh, this is Jonas's pictures so those are all pictures from the archive which were sort of introduction and then the um, the photographers we uh, so of the 10 photographers the uh, first one was Martin Frank who had been with her husband Henri Cartier Bresson she had been to Georgia earlier and she chose or they worked out that she would travel among the families of Georgia as families are very important the hospitality uh, so she spent a couple of weeks exploring that world. Then Mark Power. I mean, there is a sort of a wink to the Soviet propaganda book, which was Industry and Economy. So Mark Power did his trip was looking into these, the modern and the, the old Soviet relics all across the, I mean, big parts of the country he traveled. And, um, refugee camps. Alex Maioli, who had covered the war uh, in 2008, but he returned. And so his his trips were, um, he would he would venture towards the ceasefire. And so two, uh, about 25% of Georgia were occupied by Russian and uh, pro-Russian separatist movements. And they, so they're inaccessible from Belize to the capital. And uh, so he would go look into this a lot of there have been a lot of idps refugees so he um that was his his subject and uh, martin parr spent a lot of time at markets that's what he chose like those street outdoor outdoor markets and um nightlife cultural life Car, car selling. So Alex Soth had found a um, quote by Immanuel Kant, which said, uh, whenever you go to Georgia, you will appreciate the beauty of the Georgian women or something like this. And um, so he went on a several week road trip uh, to look for the most beautiful woman of Georgia. And they basically, followed one, they would always ask one woman, the next one to send them further on and they zigzagged across the country with his guide. And um, when he found the woman he deemed to be the most beautiful one, it was in a very far off ethnic Chechen village near the Dagestani border. And uh, the family and the woman refused to let him photograph her. So he, in the way, this is the woman he chose and uh, but we talked before, I'm just going to stop here for a second. I think when uh, we said about projects coming coming to another life. So Alec, I think, published this as a small small book separately afterwards as well. OK, so, uh, so, uh, so my part was I kind of continued what I did anyway. I mean, it was new for me to focus on that because I'd lived in Georgia for so many years, I didn't really have a I didn't really have the that, that distance of coming there, especially for the project. But I had um, I had spent a lot of time with the president, so in a way he became became my guide, and I actually followed him a lot outside Georgia as well. He was on this very 
speedy trips everywhere to to sort of promote Georgian, well, also to, to promote look for protection for the Georgian side and and uh, and promote the Georgian cause. And um, yeah, so I spent. And this is Jonas, um, I don't know, sort of off the windows and I don't know if he can say himself it was the, but uh, tell me if I'm not correct, but the uh, it was the, the first two uh, true generation of post-Soviet youth, basically the kids who were born after the end of the Soviet Union, young people, this, what's in Georgia is referred to as the English speaking generation, they're the first uh, compared to the Russian time. And uh, Antoine Dagata spent a lot of time on the southern border, this sort of dark underbelly of trade, nightlife, and um, yeah, darkness. And Georgi Pinkasov, it's the next one. Um, he is, so he's the only Russian photographer, or at the time was the only Russian photographer who had a magnum. And uh, so he could actually travel to the occupied territories, which is impossible for anybody else who comes from the Georgian side. So he went on a, his trip was on the side, on the coast of the Black Sea along to the occupied territories and um, along the Black Sea and, uh, he still came to Belize. I mean, he has a very long history with Georgia and Belize as he used to work with the Parajan of the Armenian filmmaker who lived in Georgia. And the last one is uh, Paolo Pellegrin. He had, um, so he explored all the different, well, the main different religions, the Orthodox, so Georgia is one of the oldest Orthodox Christian countries, Judaism, uh, Muslim, uh, religion and uh... okay so and uh, so this is the main bulk of the book so I'm going to show you there's a few more postcards now which uh, we'll explain later in the discussion but um, it's just postcards from Georgia Okay. I mean, we can skip the road now. <laughs> it's like we're running short on time now. Yeah, well, I think, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to see so many, many images. Yeah, you're right, we're, we're running out of time, but especially for George and Spring, by giving insight to all the photographers um, it's just great to see how differently in their visual languages, in their approach, in their subject, you know, it's, it's, it's one commission, it's one country, it's one subject, and then you can still see the variety. So it's, it's amazing to, to really get a big, bigger picture, not only because people are going into different, uh, areas, but really, yeah, they, they, have, it's like doing a completely different painting or visualization of, how you could imagine Georgia. I've never been there, but it's fascinating to see this, this different perspective. Um, maybe one question for, for, for this project. Uh, I mean, you were in a, in a, in a tricky role somehow. Uh, in this case, you were just not, not just a photographer, but a coordinator. And then, of course, a, a, a topic which is with every assignment, especially with commercial ones, when the expectations, or when you give a carte blanche, but at the end, when you deliver your works, you realize there were expectations of, even though the commissioner gives carte blanche. So how, how do you deal with that? I mean, I think a lot, there was, there was a lot of, so whatever, what do we call it? Expectation management. I think, I think you have to, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be upfront about it. I think, People knew they knew what the photographers were. It wasn't we weren't trying to have them have photographers.
photographers that, that uh, because to impose a certain idea. But I think, look, what which, which Georgia was, I think what was it was important to have curator. A, I think to have an outside person who is not a who's none of us, who is who sort of can also could take away from me. I mean, for me it was difficult because I have a very clouded view on. On, on Georgia, all of this, I was very involved. In everything, so I wouldn't, I would, under no way, I think I would have been able to, to sort of dispatch this, and um, and then, I mean, yes, the non-interference. I think this, it is important to stick to that. What was in the Georgian case, there was that's why I was like, when I sort of mentioning the postcards. There was this. We said from the beginning there would be one moment. There's total freedom in doing it, but there would be one moment when it could, the project could be killed. Sort of, there would, there would, this would be, everybody could go home and we just stop it, and this was, it. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. So it, it had to be done in an incredible speed because for some, still slightly mysterious reason, it had to be ready in July. So we did the whole book in the, was commissioned in December, then shooting in the spring, and well, the spring wasn't really the spring. So the spring was the, the spring was the, uh, was the end of winter. So it was, it's all pretty muddy and dark and. Uh, Everything. So, so for me, it was, it was like, look, uh, was it was uh, it was getting complicated, and um, yeah. So when when it came to for the to the president and the, the 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 few people involved looking at it, there was this. Well, okay, what are we gonna do? It's dark, it's muddy, it's not very. They didn't. It wasn't. It didn't make. It didn't feel warm. It didn't feel. The, it wasn't about. It was. This, this wasn't. It wasn't political. It was more sort of patriotic, or I mean, sort of in that sense. And uh, so there was this oh, this whole thing missing. So the president, in a sort of sweeping order, said, "Okay, either you stick five postcards in at the beginning and five postcards at the end, which going to show that there's also a pretty Georgia, or not, <laughs> and, or it's done. I mean, that's it. So that's what. So we had we stuck the postcards in, which is kind of it's fine. It's, it's I, I don't think it's such a big. It's no, not, I think it's, not, I mean, it's for every project probably you do for for a commercial assignments. I mean, there have been other projects where you uh, realize that the 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 institution commissioning it has, of course, expectation. But I think it's in a way, it was a sort of, maybe it was a, a slightly crude way of doing it. But it, in the end, all the rest was preserved. All the other subject, all the other themes, all the other essays, everybody had done. There was nothing. There wasn't anything. Well, oh, let's move around. Let's move this one because it's maybe a little bit more. Or like no, yeah. so. But I think when I don't, I don't think we did a very good job at the postcards. I, I didn't do a very good job at the postcards either. I was it was very hard to take very nice postcard pictures very very quickly when it was a little bit later in the year. So. It was just, so. Oh, thank you for sharing um, such a honest insights about how this project uh, <laughs> came about. Um, I'm also wondering, Jonas. Um, with access to life, just to get back to one of the projects from your presentation, um, bringing the stories of eight photographers together who were all documenting people battling with AIDS in different countries with different chances of survival. Um, what do you think the project as a whole has been able to do? I mean, you did already mention how much money it raised, um, but do you also think that if we just speak about what photographs can do, um, yeah, maybe it's a difficult question, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm 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 generally not of the sort of um, no, nor, normally I don't have the idea that sort of like my images will change the world. Uh, I mean, like my images on their own will have you know impact that will sort of change many people's lives i believe in sort of my work being sort of just part of a the general conversation out there about who we are and and the issues we humans face you know and, and it's a part of a, a cumulative conversation in that particular case you know i think the nature of it changed a lot because it it, it 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 it's not it wasn't just a, a journalistic endeavor although you know journalism was made in the the, the course of the project but it wasn't just a, a, a reportage you know it wasn't national geographic uh, commissioning eight photographers to go and document this crisis i mean from the get-go the the aim of the project was you know to to uh, 
to, to raise funds, to get more medicines to more people in more difficult places. I mean, that, that, that was the entire agenda of the project. Um, you know, of course, an, an agenda that I very much would happily collaborate with. And if I could help in, in that process, then, then that, that's great. I think outside of that context, you know, the work would, uh, would, would not have the effect that it did, you know, uh, uh, as a piece of activism, you could say, you know, if it was just an editorial project, it would probably fall flat uh, compared to what the actual results were. So, I mean, in in the sense here, the, the project got its strength and, and, and sort of its momentum from not being just an editorial project. Yeah. Uh, even though you know so many of us photographers have done editorial projects about these kind of issues uh here the fact that it was a a commission from 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 a non i mean i wouldn't have, of course you can call it commercial but they, it was a not not an editorial commissioner that that's what made it make a difference and uh, to be honest with you for for me it was it's because of that that i felt like i had some you know right to be there to do uh, i mean to, to 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 engage in this work in a in the sense that you know the, the work felt more uh you know appropriate and i felt like you know i had a, a a mission there that was really worth worth something you know yeah um yeah i think especially the fact that all the photographers all went to a different place and that with each contribution, um, uh, the project project really shows that this is a global, uh, um, um, you know, a gro global problem, and that people in, in in different parts of the world have completely different chances in how to to battle this uh, disease. That actually bringing all the contributions together made it so strong. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really an an, an interesting and, and successful project, I would say. Yeah. So unfortunately, we have to come to an end. I mean, I think we still have a long list of questions that we'd love to ask you. Um, but um, one last question, of course, that we have to to ask you: What about competition? I mean, we're spoken, speaking about group projects. What about competition? Do you feel? Uh, more stressed because other people are dealing with the same subject. How much is it comparing or the looking at, oh, he did that very well or I did it better. So you have been so openly to so give us an insight on how competitive your group projects are. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't know. What do you think? I don't, I don't think it's too competitive. I think it's, uh, you don't want to be an idiot. You don't want to look like an idiot. I mean, you want to put your energy in. You, want, you, don't, want to, you don't want to screw it up because it matters. But it's, it's not, I don't, I don't. If it's done okay, you have your corner, you work on your thing, there's no, what do you, I mean, it's not gonna, you're already, you're already selected. I mean, that's, I think, I think there's a strange competition to be on group. Maybe there's a bigger competition to be on, when I was joking about the bribing, but I think it's a very complicated job. It's a very ungrateful job to actually be responsible for who's going to be, I, I don't envy anybody on the staff or something who has to, has to do it because it's like, but, um, hmm. To be on it, but once you, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I think, I, I think it, whatever competition there is, it's a healthy one, isn't it? I mean, like, like, like I mentioned before, you know, some group projects, you know, fall flat, and, and maybe it's like when, you know, whatever it takes for people to invest their their energy into it, whether it's just selfish competition or if it's actually like true inspiration for the project, or they just want to shine somehow. You know, like it, 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 it. Um, I mean, I think what uh, whatever gets people on their toes a little bit, and and you know, really don't want to screw something up. That's a good thing. So I, I think, you know, it, it's human to feel that, and I, I, I think the more you know, when people really feel it, the better. Yeah. It it wasn't the most serious question, but I thought it was a nice one to come to to an end. So yeah, thank you so much, all of you, for for contributing. If people want to know more about the project, there's of course a Magnum website where you can see a lot 
there are videos on our website uh, um, where you can see again in deeper insight into the eight chapters of the exhibition. So there's lots of stuff, lots of conversation between Magnum photographers also about their work. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining and uh, have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.